I suppose there's quite a few dreams in, in my life. Looking all around the world, it's the same everywhere I go. When music connects with me, I cannot describe how it feels, really. It seems to be, um, well, it's led me throughout my life. If you mistreat people, the blue's gonna let you. The whole journey, I, I think, from when I made my first record, just been to, to try and connect in the same way that people who I've been listening to and have been the soundtrack to my life, in the same way that they're completely connected with me. If you mistreat your friend, the blue's gonna let you know. Well, it don't matter if you're a poor girl or a queen. You should know about all the evil things out all around the world. It's the same everywhere I go. My earliest musical memory was um, opening the wardrobe in my, my parents' bedroom and discovering something which I later discovered was a mouth organ. And I took it out there and I started, and I figured out what it was and started blowing it and it blew my mind, you know, because I could feel all these, uh, these vibrations in my head and in my body. And uh, I remember ending up going, I, I just walked out the house blowing this thing and I actually got lost and they had to call the police and they found me uh, wandering up and down Blue, uh, New Orleans, completely sort of you know, lost in space. Well, it don't matter if you're a pauper or a king. You should know about these evil things. I discovered a man called John Fahey very early on and bought a record called uh, Transfiguration of Blind Your Death. If I could make people feel like he's making me feel now, man, that is, that, what a dream that is, you know. Luckily, um, I had a room that uh, I, I could escape to in the evening and, uh, and literally put the needle on, take it off, put it on, put it off. Put it on. So my records on the floor were Fred McDowell's Sun House, Sonny Terry Brown and McGee, John Lee Hooker, Lightning Hopkins. They were scattered on my floor and I just spent hours in the dark often, <laughs> just with the light of the stereogram, you know, uh, yeah. Talk bad about your friends. The world gonna let you. We had a coffee bar, as many places did. You know, we had a coffee bar in Bamber Ridge called the Coffee Bean. There were a couple of guys in there that played music and they liked the blues, so we decided to get together. They were all working then. They were at Leyland Motors, you know. You all had jobs and like cars and stuff. And I was still in short pants at, at school in Blackburn, you know. We had one amplifier, which was a Watkins Westminster. Uh, and we wired everything into that one jack plug. I think there was two guitars and a microphone and it we very carefully put it in. And Miggy, the singer, had a Reslow mic. And that's when, that's, yeah, that was my first band. One of the advantages of being influenced in the early days by John Fahey and getting to grips with, the, with my acoustic guitar and being able to accompany myself, I, I realised that, that, wow, I could tra I can travel. So that's what I did. And my early busking experiences were in Newquay, in fact, where I used to sit at the top of the, of the beach road and play for people going, on, going down to the beach and stuff. In 1968, I started going to London and busking in Portobello Road. And I think it was a year later, um, I was busking and that is, that led to a, a situation which completely changed my life um, and gave me a path on which I could, you know, follow from then on. And that was, of course, uh, the meeting of, with Sunhouse. Swear I saw Willie Brown running down the road. He taught me two things that completely changed my life. One was which he said he, 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 he saw me he saw me busking and all oh, that slide playing. He said, you know, he said, well, you know the, the thing, the song, it's the song. We've got to 
you know, it's a song that's important. So, and he also told me that uh, you've got to have rhythm. This thing has got to have rhythm, otherwise I'll walk away. So rather than just going out from then on and playing the, the Robert Johnson stuff and the Sunhouse stuff, I started writing. And I started to wrap the slide licks that I'd already been amassing in my slide toolbox, you know. Um, I started to insert those within my songs, and that's how my style began. And all they had was six strings in a dream. I mean, I've made 15 records now, I think it's about 160 songs on that, and they all adhere to those two principles that um, I so gratefully received from him on that day. Chicago. I was lucky enough to go to a place called Dartington Hall in Devon, where um, I concentrated on drawing and painting and visual arts and education. But also whilst I was there, and this is the reason I went there, I could study music further. Uh, and I was fortunate enough to have sitar lessons, which I had for two years. And that was my christening into this other slide guitar thread, you know, which ended up in Calcutta with the Venus, you know, 11 centuries ago and so forth. So many years later, when I got married, we were looking to, for somewhere to go in the winter and I thought, oh, Goa sounds nice. I've been going on and off for 20 years, but very regularly for the last five or six years. It's people traveling the world, people with time to spare, people you can have conversations all day long. Uh, to such a depth that you rarely get to have when you're at home with all your surrounding inconveniences, you know. So any opportunity to go to India was, was you know, grasped with both hands, really. Yeah, ha having had a, a lifetime in the blues, uh, a friend of mine and myself, we, uh, we decided it was time to pay our dues. So we, we planned a trip to the Delta, especially to Clarksdale. Well, I don't like driving at the best of times In the dark or late at night It didn't take me long to realise that this was everything that I'd always hoped it would ever be. Please dim those headlights What a hard day, I want to get home Discovering Clarksdale is turning out to be one of the highlights of, of this part of my lifetime. Please dim those headlights. Don't you take I think writing songs has given me a really important release, given me a reason, caused me to think and to look to comment maybe and just walking down that road um, inspired me so much you know and I would arrive at, in, in town itself with so many ideas that I would jot down then and then come back later and continue to work so a, a lot of six strings and a dream was inspired by my time there and the people and the places and the atmosphere and the vibe from Memphis to Clarksdale it's a two hour ride and every mile is worth its weight in gold and I would come back here and I would start to introduce some of these songs to the band, my road band, and we'd start to work through them and this sound kind of appeared. And then I would go back again to Clarksdale and, and do the same thing. Plus I was, I was um, road testing the songs at night in Clarksdale, you know, honing it down and trimming it back, you know, and, and trying to make that connection. So once I've got the material ready, ready to present to the band, then we'd usually meet up here in the back room. They know me well enough now to know, you know, what kind of sounds I like. So we'd get the nuts and bolts of the material together, the arrangements. And then we're going to, go to Seb's studio. He's a digital child, but understands the analog vibe completely. Perfectionist in, in, in the nicest sense. Uh, that was the guy I was going to work with. Right. You just got to get used to it. But that's all right. You just got
gotta get your head round me. I've always had a bicycle. And from the age of eight years old, I've always had a guitar. Things haven't changed much, really, to this day. I got fascinated with recumbent bicycles and tricycles and bought my first recumbent trike in the uh, mid-80s. And now I have a, a, a fully fed uh, recumbent tricycle. They're called Velomobiles. They're fast, they're efficient, and I have a lot of fun in them. But that's all right. I can get my guitars and my shopping, get a small battery amp, I can go busking, I can go to rehearsals. More importantly, they keep, they keep my heart strong. They really do. Being out in the Velomobile, I come back and I, I, I feel exhilarated. I can't stop talking, you know. It's, I, I, yeah, it's good for writing, man. It's really, really good. Great for songwriting. And you just feel alive. You feel alive. Riding along on my Velomobile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Velonauts, that's what we're called. Yeah, I'm a Velonaut. Yeah, I'm a blues playing songwriting Velonaut. Not many of them about. <laughs>